Manx TT Superbike is an arcade-style racer from Sega, the king of arcade racers in the 1990s. After years of success with open-wheel racers, stock cars, and even rally, it only made sense for Sega to keep the train rolling. The arcade mode is straightforward, allowing you to select from the fictional Laxey Coast Course or the TT Course, based on the real road course found on the Isle of Man. The bike selection is even smaller, with a single Honda available in either automatic or manual transmission. After making your selection, the game begins. You start at the back of a pack of eight and have three laps to try and win the race. Showing its arcade roots, there is also a timer, and you have to pass through checkpoints before the timer runs out to avoid game over. Controlling the superbike feels okay. Being a later Saturn game, released in 1997, Manx TT Superbike supports the 3D control pad, allowing for analog control. There is a predictable delay when shifting left and right, and Sega did a good job making the game feel significantly different than their four-wheel offerings. However, I still find them less than satisfactory. Rather than a linear shift while holding left or right, the steering is progressive, and if you hold a direction too long, you will steer violently into a wall. This does not fit the game's sweeping turns at all, and even with analog controls, I found myself making constant corrections and adjustments to avoid the moment when the steering snaps. Control problems aside, the easy course is very easy, and most should be able to place first without too much frustration. From here, we are off to the hard course. It is here we notice how awful the AI is. While your bike has to obey the laws of gravity and physics, slowing down when going uphill and losing momentum in tight turns, your opponents do not. Rather than racing and passing, the AI drones will simply whiz past at random moments and then slow down in other sections while you whiz past them. It makes for a very underwhelming experience. After a slightly more challenging time, I was able to beat the hard course and see the game's credits. Unfortunately, this is all that happens. No new bikes are introduced, no new courses are unlocked, and it makes the whole point of beating the arcade mode rather pointless. Moving from the arcade to the Saturn mode will reveal a slightly more complete experience. Additional bikes are available ranked in speed, acceleration, and handling, but they all use the same bike model with a slight texture change. The tracks are raced as a championship of sorts, but there are still just two plus mirrored versions. You can unlock some new bikes here, but it just isn't really worth it. Again, the complete lack of content here is incredibly disappointing, especially since the controls and actual racing isn't very strong to start with. Where Manx TT Superbike does excel are the graphics. The frame rate is a rock solid 30 frames per second, and the game does a great job conveying a sense of speed. Textures are also thoughtful, with restraint shown in the contrast, allowing things to look smooth rather than overly pixelated. Background objects are also nice, with 3D buildings, trees, and road signs looking appropriate, and Manx TT Superbike does a good job capturing the atmosphere of the Isle of Man. Now, the Saturn is definitely not a 3D polygon crunching powerhouse, and this game has a ton of pop-up as a result, but I'll take pop-up over a subpar frame rate any day. The soundtrack, on the other hand, is surprisingly generic. The rock tracks sound hollow, and the sound presentation as a whole is just mediocre. Rather than catchy jingles and awesome announcers, Manx TT Superbike is subdued in average. Manx TT Superbike was generally well received upon release, and Saturn fans still hold it in high regard. I suspect this is more of a testament to how bad Hang On GP is than anything else. As it stands, I find this to be a below average experience. Manx TT Superbike fails at being an exciting arcade game, fails at being a deep racer, and fails at being a good console game. The underwhelming controls, even with a 3D control pad, bad artificial intelligence, mediocre soundtrack, and a complete lack of content make this one impossible to recommend. 2 out of 5.